right, hello. We are going to continue with our discussion of Chapter 16. So we've already talked about what entropy and free energy are. We've talked about how to calculate them. And now we're going to look at free energy's dependence on pressure and equilibrium. So first, let's talk about pressure. So let's look at the pressure and how it relates to enthalpy, entropy, and free energy. So a system at constant temperature and pressure is going to proceed spontaneously in the direction that lowers its free energy because the more negative free energy is, the more likely the reaction is to go in that direction. Equilibrium position represents the lowest free energy value available to a particular reaction. So it's going to find equilibrium where delta G is the smallest or, chain, or free energy is the smallest. Free energy is dependent on pressure or concentration, and so we're going to look at how pressure affects free energy. Enthalpy, however, is not pressure dependent, and entropy is pressure dependent due to its dependence on volume. Remember, entropy is all based on disorder. The larger the volume, the more potential for different combinations and the more potential for molecules to occupy different spaces. So the larger the volume, the higher the entropy. And this relates to pressure because the higher the volume, the lower the pressure. So entropy is dependent on pressure because of volume. So the lower the pressure, the higher the entropy due to a larger volume. We can take this relationship and put it into an equation where G, the regular free energy, represents free energy at a particular pressure. G with this circle is the standard free energy, which is at a, a pressure of one atmosphere. And then we have R, which is our gas constant, our 8.314, our temperature in Kelvin, and then our, our pressure. We can also turn this into the change in free energy is equal to the change in standard free energy plus R times T times the natural log of Q. You remember that Q is our reaction quotient, which is our partial pressure of our products over the partial pressure of our reactants. And you'll remember that from our kinetics chapter. So let's look at an example. When we calculate delta G at 25 Celsius for the reaction where carbon monoxide gas is at 5 atmospheres and hydrogen gas is at 3 atmospheres and it's converted to liquid methanol. So here we are not at a standard pressure of 1 atmosphere and so we want to look at how to calculate delta G for these pressures. So first we know that delta G is equal to the change in standard free energy plus RT natural log of Q. And so first let's find our delta G standard using our standard free energies. We know that this is the products times their number of moles minus the sum of the reactants times their number of moles. And so the first part is the methanol. There's one mole of methanol and we could look up these standard free energies in the chart in the back of the book. And so if you look it up for methanol it's negative 166 and then we're going to subtract our reactants. So we have carbon monoxide and its free energy is negative 137 and plus 2 moles of hydrogen and for elements standard and uh, free energy is 0 and so if we add these all up we get negative 29 kilojoules okay so we have our standard free energy we know R we know T let's find Q first we know Q is the products divided by the pressure of the reactants so if we look at our product it's in its uh, standard state or its physical state is liquid and we know that that doesn't count when we're doing reaction quotients and so we're zero on the top and then we have carbon monoxide um, which is one times its pressure which was five atmospheres times no, get, rid, get rid of the one it's five to the one power which is just five and then our hydrogen is three and there are two moles so that value gets squared and so basically if we calculate this we get that it's equal to 0 0.022 so now we are able to find our delta G let's put this in terms of joules because our R value is in joules and so this is negative 29000 okay so negative 29000 plus 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times our temperature 25 Celsius is 298 Kelvin and natural log of 0 0.022 and if we put all that together we end up with negative 3.8 times 10 to the fourth joules 
per mole of reaction, and we could put that into kilojoules if we wanted. And so we get a negative value for our delta G, which means it's going to go towards products. Okay, so just because the delta G for reaction is negative, though, doesn't mean that it's going to go all the way to the products and have no reactants. Sometimes an equilibrium position offers a lower free energy than completion of a reaction. And so if this is our reactants, and this is the G for, oh, sorry, not reactants, products, you can see that the equilibrium position offers the lowest free energy, and so that's where the reaction will stop, or it will go to equilibrium versus going all the way to products. And we can use delta G to figure out where that's going to be. So that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so let's look at free energy and equilibrium. Okay, so we already looked at the equilibrium point. This occurs at the lowest value of free energy available to the reaction system. That's where the reaction wants to go, is the lowest free energy. In kinetics, we know that equilibrium is the point at which the rates of the forward and the reverse reactions are equal. And so for free energy, this is the place where it's the smallest or lowest free energy. Reactions will proceed to minimum free energy or equilibrium, which means that the G, the free energy of the products, is equal to the free energy of the reactants. Or if you look at the change in free energy, we want it to equal zero. And so that's the free energy of the products minus the free energy of the reactants. Okay, so let's look at how free energy and equilibrium constant can be related. We know that the change in free energy is equal to the change in the standard free energy plus RT natural log of Q, the reaction quotient. So remember, Q is for initial concentrations or pressures, and K, the equilibrium constant, is at equilibrium pressures or concentrations. So at equilibrium, we know that we want delta G to be zero and Q to equal K. So if we take this and substitute it in, we know that we want delta G to be zero equilibrium, which means that delta G standard plus, is, plus RT natural log of K is zero. Or if we rearrange, we get that the standard change in free energy is equal to negative RT natural log of K, the equilibrium constant. So there are three cases to look at with this equation. If the change in standard free energy is zero, this means that all components must be in their standard states so a pressure of one atmosphere, and it means that K, the equilibrium constant, is going to equal one. If the, the standard change in free energy is less than zero, remember we want free energy to be negative, this means that the standard and free energy of products is less than the standard free energy of reactants, and we know that K is always products over reactants, and so this means that K will be greater than one. If the change in standard free energy is less than zero, this means that reactants will be less than the free energy for products, which will give us a K value of less than one. So let's look at an example of that. So we have this reaction of nitrogen plus hydrogen producing ammonia, and the change in standard free energy is negative 33.3 kilojoules per mole of N2 consumed at 25 Celsius. So we have our change in standard free energy, we have our temperature. So for each of the following mixtures of reactors and products, we want to predict the direction in which the system will shift to reach equilibrium. Okay, so our first situation, we have these pressures for each uh, reactant and product in the equation. And we know that delta G is equal to the change in standard free energy plus RT natural log of Q. So these we would consider to be our uh, initial pressures, and so we can use Q. So the first thing we want to do is find Q, which is equal to our products divided by our reactants. So we have our NH3, which is 1, squared, since there is a coefficient of 2. And this is divided by our N2, which is 1.47, and there's only one mole of that. And our H2 is 0 0.01, and there's a 3 coefficient, so we'll cube it. And so that gives us a Q value of 6.8 times 10 to the fifth. And so then we can plug in to solve for our change in G. We know that our standard change in free energy is negative 33.3 kilojoules. So let's turn that into joules. So we're just going to move it three spots, one, two, three. So negative three, 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 zero, zero. So this is joules per mole. And then we have plus our R value, which is 8.314. Our temperature is 298 Kelvin. And natural log of 6.8 times 10 to the fifth. 
And that gives us a delta G value of zero. And so what this means is that the reaction is already at equilibrium, and so there will be no shift, which also means that K is one. Okay, let's look at a different situation where our initial pressures are all one. So this is gonna give us a different value for Q. So again, we do our product on top, which is one, and that gets squared, divided by our reactant. So for N2, it's one, and for H2, it's one. And this gives us a Q value of just one, because one over one is still one. And so now if we want to define our delta G, this is equal to our negative 33300 plus our 8.314, our 298, and our natural log of one, which ends up going to zero. So we get an answer of just negative 33,300 joules per mole. And so this means because it's negative that it's going to shift towards the products and that K is greater than one because if it's shifting towards products, then we have products over reactants, products, pressures are going to be larger. And so that gives us a K value of greater than one. Okay, so let's look at another example where we can use this information to find the equilibrium constant or K. So we have this reaction of iron with oxygen producing iron three oxide, and we want to calculate the equilibrium constant. Well, we know that we can find the equilibrium constant based on the free energy change equaling negative RT natural log of K. The difference here being that now we want to find the equilibrium constant not using initial pressures and Q. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is find the um, standard free energy change, which is equal to the change in H minus T delta S. Okay, so our delta H is going to be equal to the products times its number of moles minus the sum of the reactants times its number of moles. So we have two iron three oxides and its delta H is negative 826 minus four irons and because it's an element, its enthalpy change is zero plus three oxygens, and again, it's an element, so it's also zero. And so for delta H, that's going to give us negative 1,652 kilojoules. Okay, now let's find delta S in the same fashion. We've got two for our iron three oxide, which is 90, minus the sum of our reactants. So iron had four moles, and its value is 27. And our O2 had three moles, and its value is 205. And so that's going to give us a total of negative 543 joules per Kelvin. So again, we've got kilojoules and joules. So we're going to need to get them all to the same unit. So delta G is going to be equal to our delta H. I'm just going to turn this into joules. So I'm going to add three zeros. And let's see, minus T, which 25, so 298 Kelvin. And our delta S is negative 543 joules per Kelvin. And so for delta G, that gives us a value of negative 1.49 times 10 to the sixth joules. So now we can take that to solve for K. Well, if I rearrange natural log of K is equal to my delta G, so my negative 1.49 times 10 to the sixth joules, divided by my negative R, 8.314, times my temperature, 298. And that's going to give me 601. So remember, to the opposite of natural log, log is the E. So E to 601 is equal to K. This is a very large number. And so this means that this is a favorable reaction endothermically. And so it will occur towards products. Okay, well, we can also look at the temperature dependence of equilibrium. If you remember from Le Chatelier's principle, we use this to predict qualitatively how K would change with a change in temperature. We looked at it either as a reactant or a product, depending on if the equation was endothermic or exothermic, and that helped us determine the shift. Well, we can use the change in free energy to look at that quantitatively because we know that change in free energy is equal to negative RT natural log of K, which is also equal to delta H minus T delta S. And so we can combine those two expressions together to get that natural log of K is equal to negative change in enthalpy over RT plus change in entropy over R, 
which is equal to negative change in enthalpy over R times 1 over T plus change in entropy over R. So basically, what we've done is put this into Y equals MX plus B form, and so we get that our natural log of K is equal to negative delta H over R times 1 over T plus delta S over R. And so this is our y, slope, x, y-intercept. And so we can say that the plot of natural log of k versus 1 over t should be linear. And from there, we can find our slope and our y-intercept. OK, so we're going to do some practice with these concepts. And we'll discuss notes and work on homework in class. Have a good day.